Knicks at home after a resilient bounce back come from behind epic win in Milwaukee. And they give up 126 points to the Cleveland Cavaliers. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm tight right now, man. It, 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 it is. Yeah, it is still early. But I'm going to tell you this right now. The way this Knicks perimeter defense is looking, it is going to be the reason why they do not get to that 50 burger, J.D. It's going to be the reason why they do not have a successful season because their perimeter defense is looking like Swiss cheese right now. And I see no answers in sight. Can't blame Kemba tonight. You give Ricky Rubio a career high of 37 points. Eight of nine from downtown. My man was looking like a combination of John Stockton and Dame at times out there. Torched the Knicks. Absolutely torched the Knicks. There's no excuse for that. You gonna you want to tell me Ricky Rubio deserves a double team, even triple team? You're going to have time tied up, and you're thinking, okay, you know, this is not a night where, where they're getting washed, where they got to come from behind until the third quarter of Doom starts, and they get outscored 33-18 to 18 and get embarrassed. So if you want to tell me it's early, okay, it's early. But from what I'm seeing, I do not see any hope in this perimeter defense. And once that breaks down, you can forget it. Knicks got to do some soul searching, and they got to do it fast because the East is not going to ease up on them. The Cavs are nice this year. The Raptors are nice this year. I think the Pacers will bounce back. We'll see where the Celtics are. The Hawks are, for, are coming back to the packs. It's going to be a lot of competition for, for, for playoff seeding. And if the Knicks do not get their act together now early, it's going to be a long season. You know that, you know, a perspective that we could have is it is early. But, you know, if there's a certain skill set or flaw that a roster has identifying it early or criticizing it now doesn't mean that it's going to get better because you know um Kemba is Kemba going to become a solid defender he's not um is Rose going to be a better defender he's not and and with quickly he is still improving defensively he's actually been very solid in my opinion but the problem is is we we we're, we're not even decent <laughs> so it's like yeah. we, we we can't even we can't even play good perimeter defense in spurts which was what my hope was my hope was that yeah. you know with their offense being so much better on paper that the defense will be up and down but that they could clamp down in key situations and then that will propel them to many wins this season they're not even getting to that level and if you're if you're not a defense that you can't even clamp down in certain situations then and you're just bad for 48 minutes. You talked about the ECP and, and I know there's been some disappointments with a few teams, but the whole East, the difference is it's competitive. So even That's the right. teams that are under 500 in terms of record, they still are playing well. That's right. You know, like they like there's no easy night. It's it's basically what I'm saying. And Ricky Rubio tonight, just 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 for perspective, the last time that Ricky Rubio had a 30 point game was in February of 2018. When he is. was part of the Utah Jazz. Also perspective, Ricky Rubio has only scored 30 points before tonight. Five other times in 10 years. This is his 11th season. <laughs> 10 years. He looks and he's, he's a good player, bro. He's a, we know he's Rubio's a solid, a solid player, fan. but he ain't that. He That's ain't not that. his life. He's not he that. I mean, you when you look at Grayson Allen and you look at Ricky Rubio and you're looking at, you know, what what you're doing with Terrence Ross and one quarter like they're all, you know, perimeter players. And so the question now becomes what do you do? Because you know, and I had mentioned this, I know I want, you know, we want Rose to start. Everybody wants Rose to close and start. But Rose, to me, is not necessarily a defensive upgrade. He's over not. Kemba. He's and, not. And you have to manage his minutes regardless. Um, I think a positive, if you want to think of a positive, is Grimes. Um, 
Grimes got some minutes and let's see what happens. Let, 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 you know, you, you're going to have to start thinking. And I know you, you have mentioned CP yeah. that you're not you're not with it. I don't know if this changes I, no, your no, mind. No, no, I, know, I didn't say I wasn't with it. I just said I don't see Tibbs going there that quickly. I, I saw Grimes getting those minutes tonight. But would he have been in there had Kemba been healthy? I'm not so yeah, sure. I mean, look, I, I did like the fact that Tibbs, you know, at some point in the game went, went with the Rugrats lineup, as I like to call it, a bunch of the young guys. I think that is definitely the spark, the change that the Knicks need to start experimenting with early in the season. Um, you know, I do agree that if Kemba was in the game, I don't know if we would have saw that change. And that's something that's definitely concerning. Um, because like I said, this is the time to experiment. But outside of that, look, you look at all the points um, scored across the board. It was evenly dispersed for the most part. Yes, RJ had a bad night. So offensively, I'm not that upset. You know, they did get hot in spurts. They put up 109 points. Scoring was not necessarily the biggest issue in tonight's game. I'm going to go as far as saying it really wasn't the issue. For me, it's the defensive or lack there of, of defense. You can't give up 126 um, points to a squad, but also on top of that, I think for me, I'm also um, perplexed by the fact that we constantly allow players from opposing teams to have career games yeah. um, against yeah. the Knicks at home, yeah. in the at garden. Home. I mean, if you, you, you look at the defensive efforts throughout the game, I mean, you have Ricky Rubio out there looking like Steph Curry, yeah. and there's no type of adjustment on the defense to go ahead and make it so that they have to pass the rock out to somebody. But then also the, the scouting report is out there too, because a lot of teams know when you come into the garden or when you're playing the Knicks in general, right? What happens is, is that they know if you take that three ball away from them, nine times out of 10, you're going to win that game, right? It's much different than what we saw in the Milwaukee game. What happened when the threes weren't falling? You drove in the paint and you forced the Bucks to defend you. That was completely out of the equation today. You were settling for shots that you weren't getting. They were forcing you to take those shots because yeah. they knew that you weren't going to go ahead and contest them another type of way. And also, again, going back to that defense, you weren't putting any defense on top of the guys you weren't making the shots hard for them you weren't contesting you we yeah. were basically giving them the whole court out there you know the, people want to say okay it was rubio he had he had one of those nights again mobley put it on him and yes even though we did get 109 points out there that Cavs defense is nice it, they're 12th in the league they swarm on the perimeter i saw Osman playing well i saw uh um sexton in his minutes sexton left a little bit early uh, Stevens was, was playing Randall well. You had Mobley forcing Randall to, to making some some terrible shots, taking some terrible shots. And then they funnel everybody into the middle where you got the Twin Towers. They got a nice setup defensively. They even went into like a zone, J.D. It looked like, I don't know, it was like a 2-1-2 zone where they had Mobley playing in the middle. They have a nice scheme and they have a, yeah. a solid defense. So I, I understood why the Knicks were a bit apprehensive to go inside on them. The Cavs are number 1 in the league in terms of opponents free point uh free throw attempts. So yeah. they they play a disciplined defense and don't foul and so their defense is uh is pretty steady. I, I give RJ the, the night off tonight. You know what I mean? He just didn't have it. Oh, I, I, mean, I thought he had some shots in rhythm. He, he just wasn't cooking tonight. Knicks overall shot 29% from downtown as 9 of uh 31. And then conversely, yes, the, the Cavs were on point. 54% from downtown, 19 of 35. Seemed like everyone they took, they were knocking them down. So again, yeah, it, it was it was one of those nights offensively um for, for both teams. You know, the Cavs were hot and the Knicks weren't and and you know second game in a row where they, they weren't cooking from downtown so again disappointing there I think if we look at some positives and salute to everybody in the chat once again hit that thumbs up on free squad if you look at some positives I thought uh, that second unit did their best yeah. to get us back into the game again after we got outscored 33 to 18 went into the fourth quarter down by like 14 15 I thought OB and IQ was solid for us out there Quentin Grimes came out there he knocked down a three you know, again, mm -hmm. did his best defensively, but um, that that wasn't there. But really, it was IQ and OB really forcing the issue. IQ again, Ash, got a steal, forced some turnovers. Yeah. The floater was falling. The, the three-point shot from the elbows falling. I thought OB was excellent as, as, as an attacker. So look, Tibbs doesn't escape faults here. Tibbs is not at, you know, is not absolute from this conversation because what happens is you see what's unfolding on the court. 
You see what's happening in front of you. You see Rubio is shooting the lights out and the scheme should be to double him. And it shouldn't have been doubling him in the fourth quarter. It shouldn't have been doubling him in the third quarter. It should have been doubling him the immediate at the immediate moment that you saw this man has the hot hand. Force it to somebody who's not shooting like that. You're giving Ricky Rubio an entire court, an entire playground, and man, you're not toying, making any adjustments. Man, just toying with him out there. Toying absolutely. With him out there. It got to a point that he knows that you cannot stop him, man. and it's absolutely asinine to me that the adjustments are just not there. From, from a coaching standpoint, you're watching what's happening in front of you, and yet you still have not made the proper adjustments. And we see what happens when he does make the adjustments. Look at the Milwaukee game. And then you see what happens when he doesn't. Look at this game. I did think that he tried to make an adjustment, but as you mentioned, it was too late. Like, he tried to double late in the fourth <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at that yeah. point. And, and, you know, he had 10 assists, and you, you saw a couple plays where when they tried to double – he torched the double team by, you know, finding someone open. Our rotation is late. But at that point, you know, trying to make an adjustment at that point, this guy's confidence is so high. You, you, like when you're a player and you get into that zone, you know, there comes a point in the game where you see the floor differently. The basket yeah. is much bigger. Wide open. Like, it's ocean. There's nothing you can do. So I 100 percent agree with Ash in terms of, uh, you know, the lack of adjustments. And, and we, we said you know, we said that this season that, you know, Tibbs is going to be someone that we're going to look at in terms of we understand coach of the year and all that stuff, respect the coach. But there's one part of criticism that he's faced in the past, and that's, you know, the adjustment department. Um, we saw it in the playoffs and Ash was talking about even the previous games before. How about Miles Turner? You know, when Miles Turner, Miles Turner gets hot and you, you know, you don't mix it up. You know, we talked about bringing different options, different ways of just attacking Miles Turner. Listen, at the end of the day, the difference between the second unit and the first unit was just a ball movement. You know, IQ did such a good job as a, in the point guard role. Yeah, he did. Just moving the ball around, and it really, really helped us. And that's something that our starters, our star players, need to do better of. There's such limited ball movement in that first unit and it's pretty yeah pretty you know, sad to watch and it's a lot of randall just getting the iso ball on the weak side and he's trying to make something happen and then defense collapses on him and then evan is just running around trying to get the ball to bail him out and then he patches it passes it to rj yep. and rj is just shooting the ball with two seconds left in the shot clock and it's not going to work that way you know we have to give up good shots for great shots and our shooters are not getting in a good position mm -mm. to get great shots at all you know, evan's running around he's not scoring up to the basket rj is not getting good looks and so julius has to move the either move his butt other than just doing lazy screens and just looking for the ball on the weak side or let rj maneuver the offense and dish it out the perimeter defense mm -hmm. and this isn't just like a small adjustment we have to make for next game or it was just a mismatch this game it's just like an, an atrocious an atrocious thing that's happening since like the opening game to this back from the celtics opening game you can say make the case that our perimeter defense has just been terrible and yeah maybe it's a little bit has to do with kemba and evan but a great defensive team plays as a team and it's just so much one-on-one yeah. -on -one ball and, and it's just not going to get it done no way and i don't know what tibbs has to do if it's rotations or just you know more minutes to certain guys but our perimeter defense is just terrible right now tibbs to me has a lot to prove i'm not throwing him under the bus i respect him as a coach but ashley was on point a hundred percent jd and cp you were too you have to make adjustments, you know, where's the double team? Respect out to Rubio, you know, I'm not I'm not saying he's a flake or anything, you know, yes, he doesn't score too many thirty point games, mm -hmm. but he is a professional and if you don't sharp it up with the with the perimeter defense, you know, he's gonna have those kind of games. And my question to you all is I mean, we talked about it last year too, you know, Besides the you know the double teaming or even the strategic moves that he can make, will he give some burn to some other guys? I was shocked to be honest that I saw Grimes out there today. Um, so I give him his little prop for that for putting in Grimes. But hey, try Jericho Sims. JD made an excellent point. Okay, we don't want to throw Jericho Sims if you know if Embiid is is walking all over him, but give the guy a chance if 
you're not going to give the youngsters, you're not sending them down to the G League, mm-hmm. and, you know, you believe in learning and sitting in the bench, but give them some berm as well. But <laughs> I just think that Tibbs needs to, to do, you know, what he has to do, and, and yeah. hopefully he, he will listen and take Oof. it. And I, I still think it'll, it'll be a, a couple more games, but if the same patterns exist, I think the move will ultimately be Burks' minutes coming down. My guy Burks... Uh, for Grimes, I think it'll be Grimes. I, don't, I still don't see McBride getting into the mix just yet. I think it'll be Grimes getting in um, at the expense of Burks's minutes. That's just that's just a, a, a guess by me. If if the problem still persists, but they're winning, right? Or they're 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 a few games over five hundred. Is it going to happen? I don't know. You know, now you start losing some games, then there could be a sense of urgency to make some changes and. Even if they go to Grimes over Burks, CP, are you really, really solving the issue? Uh, because it's no. a point guard. Yeah. So yeah. It, yeah. unless uh, now, unless you're going to do what he did tonight and you're going to be creative, you're going to allow Grimes to play some guards, some quicker guards, then then you can make it work yeah. that way. Could be 48 too. And putting Grimes in there and going with that Grimes RJ uh, uh, wing tandem. Because that's the future right there right now. <laughs> Defensively, there has to be better adjustments made. You can't go ahead and let a hot hand continue to cook. Offensively, we got to get back to that ball movement that made us, you know, successful in the past. It's too much of a stagnant offense. It's too much relying on the three ball and not having a plan B. It's not enough constant movement making those defenses dizzy, making them work to block our shots, to contest our shots. Julius Randle needs to go ahead and realize he is not the hero of the story and he doesn't have to always save the day. Tibbs has to realize sometimes your rotation that you're coming into the game with, it sounded good on paper. When it comes to the trials and tribulations of the actual game, it's just not going to work. It's not a knock on you. Happens to the best of them. Make the adjustments. You got to let the young guys cook. They're out there. The scouting report is not out on them yet. You got to give them some minutes. This is the time to go ahead and, you know, manipulate and experiment with rotations. Do not dig yourself into a hole too deep that when you're looking at, you know, after the Christmas Day, you know, games, when you're looking after the All-Star break, that um, now you're in a severe problem that you can't get yourself out of. There's a lot of room for improvement still early in the season. Go ahead and make those improvements because if we're having this conversation in January, we have some serious problems we got to look at. <laughs> 